A number of years ago, I was driving around Dubuque, Iowa, train spotting with my sons Christian, who was four at the time, and Karsten, who was two. Christian loved trains. Karsten, not so much. They were sibling rivals from the time I brought Karsten home from the hospital, and Christian said, Dad, when are you going to take him back? Well, this day, as we were watching a train go by, I asked Christian, What do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I want to be a train engineer. I then asked Karsten the same question, and he smiled and said, I want to be a train robber. Sometimes when we purchase old trains on the internet and we get them and inspect them closely and test them carefully, we feel like we've been robbed. In this video, I'm going to talk about minimizing the likelihood of feeling robbed when you buy an all-aboard layout. I've acquired and sold American Flyer all-aboard layouts for approximately two decades now. Almost every time I started with a six-panel Pioneer 600 set and then added individual panels to it. Once I was able to purchase an eight-panel Champion 800 set and then added panels to that. However, my dream was to someday find a complete, original Westerner 1200 set, a 12-panel set. But year after year, the big fish eluded me. In fact, from the early 2000s until now, I never saw one on eBay about two decades worth of time. Maybe one got listed, but somebody caught it before I saw it and could get my hook into it. Then about a month ago, I was checking something I had listed for sale on eBay and, well, what the heck. I typed in all aboard on the search engine and right at the top was a Westerner set. Whoa, baby! I quickly hit the buy it now button and could hardly contain my excitement. I paid for it by selling part of the layout you may have seen on my previous videos on all aboard layouts. And I also sold some other items. And then I waited for it to arrive. Believe it or not, it arrived for my birthday. And what a special present. However, my enthusiasm was dampered by the condition of some of the panels, a condition not noticeable on the listing pictures. Nevertheless, I know it's rare to find a pristine all-aboard set. After all, they were made in 1965 and 1966. It just meant some extra negotiation with the seller and some added work for me, the buyer. In this video, I'm going to talk about what to look for before you purchase an all-aboard set and also what you can do to salvage less-than-perfect sets. Let's begin. First thing to look for. Are the panels warped? If they are warped too much, the track connections may not work and the panels will not match up well with other panels. Maybe keeping weight on the warped area will decrease the warp. Um, you could always ask your mother-in-law to sit on it for a few days. But if I see a warp panel and it's warped too much, I just pass on it. Number two, track rust and or corrosion. This is typical with old Pike Master track that's on the panels. The question is, how bad are the tracks? I've found that a Dremel tool with some buffing attachments can clean up tracks that aren't really too bad. However, if there is too much rust and or corrosion, I usually try to look somewhere else for panels, as the track may be beyond the point of no return. Number three, broken end tabs. At the end of the tracks on the panel, small metal hooks affix the track to the projections of the plastic tri ties. If they are broken, the rail will raise up when connecting it to another track. My rule is, if just one end tab is broken, I'll fix it with some super glow put underneath the track and on the side of the track, just near the bottom of the side of the track, facing the inside of the track, so it's not so noticeable. If both end tabs, end tabs are broken, I'd rather just find another panel. Number four, broken pegs underneath tunnels. I've rarely found tunnels with all the pegs that fit into the holes on the mountains of the curved panels. You can drill small holes and put in some very small crews to make your own kind of pegs. 
Even without pegs, the tunnels usually stay in place when operating your layout. So this is usually not a big problem and doesn't deter me from acquiring um, an all aboard tunnel. Number five, raise track on curved panels. Many times I've acquired curved panels with the track up raised from the panel in the middle some place of the track. There is usually a small hole in the tie of that track near the middle of the curved track section and you can drill a small hole in the panel and then affix the track to the panel with a small blackened screw, try an end scale screw. However, Sometimes the bow is a little bit too big and or perhaps the panel dips down a little bit too much and this fix just doesn't work very well. In that case, again, better to save your effort and time and get a different panel. Number six, condition of the engine and the rolling stock. In the next video, I'll talk in more detail about improving the performance of an all aboard engine. But before you think about doing so, you need to ask yourself the question if the engine is worth all the work you have to put into it to salvage it. Pioneer 600 engines are pretty inexpensive and easily found on eBay, and it might be worth your while just to uh, purchase another engine to complete your set. Number seven. Likewise, the rolling stock are not that expensive. And if there are broken off pieces, it may be to your benefit to simply look for an inexpensive substitute. Well, those are just some hints and suggest suggestions that you can use before you purchase an all aboard layout. And I hope you can find an all aboard set in great condition. And I hope this video has helped you to find such a set. And even if you purchase a set that needs some work, I hope this video will help you in restoring that set into an aesthetically pleasing and good working layout. In the next video, I'll share tips and suggestions for setting up an all aboard layout and show you my Western, Westerner set in action for the first time. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit that like button, and I'll see you the next time. Have a blessed day.